I'm a demo is about uh, JSON editor and just uh, as a background. Uh, let me mention this website, which is uh, like this is a JavaScript uh, library, and uh, this is basically a, a web demo for it. And it's my favorite JSON editor, which is why I have uh, implemented it in Fortress Core. And uh, to also, uh, if you have the if you, if you use this uh, uh, demo solution that we have on the on the Lombic repo, then there is a, a sample for it, which I will show now. Uh, so how it works is that uh, you have the page, and if you go to edit, then you get an editor where you can like uh, use a use a three editor as you would want to and whatever you need, or just go with conventional JSON, but it's text highlighted and it can even uh, fix simpler uh, JSON issues with the code. And also it has a feature for templates. So if you click append, you can add these templates, which is like uh, prepared uh, JSON code and if we go over to so uh, all the configurations are uh, like strongly typed uh, maps to uh, C sharp objects and one of these is this uh, template which I can show an example. Yeah, so it's not very complicated, but the point is that you can pass an object and then it gets uh, configured. And uh, then in the end, you can use it uh, with a simple tech helper for uh, that uh, includes a JSON editor. You can set the string as a content and then just pass in names. So you can basically seamlessly integrate it uh, instead of any uh, string uh, parameter in your view model. And, uh, that goes here and on the view end. Uh, so when it comes to this JSON field, which is just a regular content field and on the view end, it just exposes the, the exposes the field content for you. And then here, for example, is a sample that these these contents are loaded in runtime. But realistically, you would use it for something a bit more complicated. Like there is another project where we use it to supply data to uh, survey JS or like any other client side JavaScript module. Uh, could make good use of it. Uh, as for this uh, content field, this JSON field, uh, it, uh, it, it goes very meta because you actually can set its own configuration inside the JSON editor. Uh, if you want to like change what kind of modes it has, and you can like set it for each uh, field, uh, can you like with custom the, templates. Pardon? Can, can you configure the configuration editing JSON editor with a JSON editor? No, the this editor uses the default settings. Oh, that's sad. Yes, there are no turtles all the way down. <laughs> Anyway, so here in this sample, you can see that uh, when you uh, display, we have just a little bit of uh, liquid to uh, access the content uh, through JavaScript. And uh, using this JSON field global variable. Right? And then this is the name of the field. And uh, so you can use it, for example, to uh, transfer the data into whatever 
uh, JavaScript uh, object you will need uh, that will console it. And uh, anything else? Yeah, as I said, you can pass, uh, you can use the stack helper on its own. Uh, if you want, you can pass in any kind of object that can be consumed by uh, by JSON.NET, but uh, then you have to make sure to uh, handle it correctly because it will still return uh, a string. So that could be tricky, but uh, normally you can use this field or introduce the editor into your uh, other editors wherever you want to use it. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. So questions? Are you okay with questions and comments? Uh, sure. You can say no. Yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so that's a good idea. And um, so what's the name of the field? Uh, what's the name of what? The name of the field. Uh, where is it? JSON field. Yeah, it's just the JSON field. Is. JSON field. Okay, that's good. So, good point. So, I like it. It's a JSON field. Uh, the same way we have an HTML field. Okay. And yeah. uh, so, what do you, what properties do you have on this JSON field in the class? Uh, well, you have the um, what the, the value was a string. Now show me the field first. Ah, here is a field, yeah. Okay, so it's string just value. A value. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you said it. So you are right. Okay, string value. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. So then, then, the, I think the, Maybe the default editor for the JSON field should just be the text area or a simple, very simple JSON editor. And this specific editor that you have should be a different uh, field editor, like, um, or yeah, like uh, whatever the name is, like full JSON editor, so that when you define the field, you can select what editor you want to use. And the properties of, because right now I'm sure that all these properties you have um, are in the default JSON field settings. Yes. But they just make sense for this editor. So that's why having a separate field editor would make it better to be able to later remove it or just have another JSON editor with other settings. Because I'm sure these settings they are not common to all JSON. They must be, there must be some specific to this editor. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you can't use this editor as a default editor either. I think for the HTML editor, we have the one called default, which is actually using um, a nice HTML editor, mm -hmm. and the one called, it's not an EMC, what's the name, uh, Antoine, of the HTML editor we use by default? Trembowig. Trembowig, and we have an editor called Trembowig, which is using also Trembowig. But the idea is that the user decides to use a default by saying default or not saying anything, and we give him Trembowig, or decides to use Trembowig, and if tomorrow we decide to change the default, it will still use Trump. So, so that would be nice to just extract what you made for this editor into different, what we call field, field editor. Like we have part editors, we have field editors. So you can select what editor you want to use for this field. But that, what I like is the fact that the JSON field just has a JSON uh, value. Why call it value? Uh, I, I think we decided by convention to not name things value because it was too generic and it was value for everything. So if you look at the HTML field, the text field, uh, I assume we try not to use value if we can, like JSON field could have a property named JSON. Okay, that makes sense. 
just 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 check then after with HTML and Markdown, but I think they are called uh, by the what they contain, like uh, .html, .markdown, because for the Markdown field, you can also have .html actually. Uh, but, but yeah, so that's also another comment on that. Um, and, oh, something else you might want to do, the same way we do it for the, the, the Markdown. For the Markdown, for instance, we have, we store the Markdown itself, but there is a way to get the JSON, the, sorry, the HTML out of it, either as a property or an extension method and liquid filters and so on. What would be interesting would be to provide the helpers to get the JSON document out of the string. Um, so it's so what you did here, your in your samples, for instance, you use it in JavaScript because it's easy for you to just render the string, and in JavaScript it will be like an object. Fine. But what if I am in, um, if I want to do something else, like extract some properties out of it, not in JavaScript, but on the server side, you will need some helpers in liquid to convert it to an, to an object, and then you can access the properties directly. That would be super nice. Same thing in, in Razor. Um, so some, some helpers to convert the string into uh, a JSON object, a manipulable uh, object. And um, but I, I think if you can access the field in liquid, uh, the field's value, then you can already convert it into JSON. Between I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Can you actually? I, I, maybe, we have a, do we have a, maybe we have a filter for that. That would be good, yeah. So we have some, I saw it in the... And, and there are like 90% chances I did that or I asked to do it, but yeah, probably, but I don't remember. Okay, JSON parse, JSON parse. Yes. Right. So there, there is a JSON parse. Okay, that's nice. So we can do it in liquid. And then in, you can say yes, you can say in Razor that just use C sharp, whatever thing you want. Okay, so that's good. Um, right. Yeah, but that's a, that's a good idea. I like it. And on the display, I didn't really get. So what do you display by default on the display? You could say nothing, but I'm not sure it's the case. Uh, yeah. So this is the display. It uh, ah, just exposes script. the script. What is that thing? If it isn't filled in window, what is that? Uh, what? Oh, that's the TP, That's the editor itself. No. No. <laughs> Uh, what do you mean? What does the script do? Uh, the script uh, creates this uh, this global object if it doesn't exist, and then yeah, assigns that's wrong. That's the content. Wrong. What if you have two fields on the same content item? Uh, if they have different, they must have different name. Okay. So this is an object, and then they will have different property. But why that do? object? Why? Uh, what do you suggest instead? So you are assigning the JSON into a window property. Why? What? Uh, so that uh, other parts can access it or like this widget can access it in, in this example. Yeah, I would just say let them do that if they want in if they want to access it this way in JavaScript, they serialize it in JavaScript. But that's what to do it by default. I would just say either output the cheese on itself or don't don't output anything. That's when to it's super opinionated to decide, oh I will just make it available in JavaScript. First, that's a weird opinion. And second, to do it directly in the field called JSON field by the field name, that's weird. That's too, yeah, that, that could, same thing, that, could, that should be, if you want, a custom display. Mm -hmm. And user can decide to use this opinionated way of exposing the JSON field, but by default, it should just expose nothing. 
and let them do whatever they want with the dot JSON of the object. My opinion. But it's in a lombic thing. It's whatever you want. If I, if it had to be in Orchard Core, the main repo, it would not be that opinionated. Right. Well, I think these are interesting suggestions, and I think I will definitely look into them. And I'll suggest put something together so that it can be accessed because uh, in our own project, currently we just use the uh, oh, tech helper in yeah. itself. I mean, you have you have a need, so you answer to your need first. I totally get it. That makes sense. Yeah. So if you want to, I we will check with Zoltan and talk with Lambic. If you want to submit a, a JSON field to the main repository, I think that would be a nice addition. We don't have that, with or okay. without the custom nice editor. At least the the, 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 the JSON field that CSIC here is very uh, is very nice. Just one line, but everything that is around to make it a field, it's super useful to have a JSON field. And that's weird that we don't even have that already. Yeah. I I'm not sure it's like something that has a, a wide use case. So it's not that good. Uh, well, people could use a text field for sure and then do the same thing. But the fact that it is a JSON field will help to create more designers like editors and display. You could do it on the text field, but that might be a way to extend the usage of JSON and content types, I, I, I think. Because same thing, we have HTML, right? It could be a text field with custom editors, but no, it's a case so common that you want it to be part of uh, a, a first class citizen in, in the system, like right? yeah, HTML field, not just text. Same thing for JSON. Good, thank you.